Hey everybody, it's Allison, stlprostretch.com. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Today's video is going to be on gentle, easy stretches for travel. Um, I know whenever I'm traveling, whenever I get to my de destination, I am often super stiff. Usually I haven't been drinking enough water. Um, planes tend to dehydrate you and I'm sitting a lot, so either in planes or cars or trains or whatever. And um, usually by the time I get to my hotel room, I don't really feel like exercising too much. So um, I know I need to stretch. I know it's going to make me feel better, but how do I get myself in that mood <laughs> to stretch? So usually I just start with something really easy, really easy. And then that just leads to me wanting to do more stretches. So this is what we're going to do today. As usual, work within your range of motion. If something hurts, stop doing it and um, always move and resist. Unless we're doing something where you're not supposed to be moving, <laughs> then don't. Um, anyway, let's come to the mat. I've got a rolled up blanket. You can use um, a yoga block or just a pillow for your head. You don't really need anything if you don't want it. And then we're going to lie on our back. So usually my first go-to is just to take my feet out wide and then rotate my knees in and open, just windshield washer style. And usually this just feels really good to me. And then I just spinal twist. So take your feet and your knees up, arms out to the side. And I'm just going to be lazy about this. For those of you who want abdominal work, you can lift your feet up. So your 90 degree bend in the knees and the hips. But usually I'm too lazy to do that when I'm traveling. So I'm just going to bend and then rock from side to side. So spinal twist, just get the kinks out. I'm usually thinking about um, controlling the movement, but this top hip moving it away from my head so I can stretch my QL quadratus lumborum, which is a deep muscle of the spine. You could turn and hold. There is a yoga pose um, where they do this, and they try to align the knees. So usually one knee is like way far back. We want to try to align them. So if you wanted to hold it and then work this top hip away, I just got to pop on my back doing that. It's called Jatara Parivartanasana, like swinging pose, and then they hold. Sometimes they actually straighten out the legs. But that is up to you. If you want to hang out there for a while, you certainly can. And as you hang out there, you'll notice that your shoulder will get closer to the ground. Some of you, your shoulder may be way up high. Don't worry about that. Just kind of work it down. And then we we'll move back to center. And we're going to start with that lateral quad stretch, which is really simil similar to this windshield wiper thing. But we're adding the hip. So cross the ankle over the other knee. And I'm going to push the ankle into the knee. So my foot is pushing out. My knee is pushing open. And they're going to hook. And my foot is out like 45 degree away from me. And I'm going to rotate the knee in and open. This just always feels so good to me in the hip. It's more of, for me, it's more of a waist stretch. But for some of you, it might not be. And some of you might have not have a lot of mobility in this stretch. So even if you can only come down this far, that's fine. And then just open it up this far, that's fine. Move within your range of motion. And I promise you, over time, you will get better at it. If you are one that's really flexible and you want a more of a quad stretch, pull your heel in toward your butt. Plant it down and then rotate in. You will definitely get more quad stretch there. 
So you yogis, this is a great way to get into one-sided, one-legged, ekapada, supdavrasana, reclined hero pose. One leg require, reclined hero pose. And then I'm going to switch sides. So my right foot's going to go out to the side, 90 degree, or 90 degree bend at least in the knee. So we don't want the, we don't want the leg to be like way out there because then when you rotate in, it's just going to torque the knee. We, we do want it to be like at least a 90 degree bend or more and then cross the ankle over and press the ankle. So the ankle is pushing out, the knee is pushing open, in and open. And again, you know what? This might be as far as you can go. And that's okay. Just work within your range of motion. And if you are a Supdivarasana person, pull this heel in toward your hip. So bring it right up against your hip. Rotate in. You're going to get a lot more quad stretch than doing it the other way. And then we're going to work into some calves and ankles. I like to be gentle about this one to start. So I'm going to bring a knee into the chest, pull it in, hug it into my chest, kick my foot up, point flex, Circle around one direction, circle around the other direction. Just keep kind of changing, changing directions. And then switch legs. So right knee into the chest, pull it in, stretch the left leg out, kick up toward the head. So I've got my knee pulled in so much that if I kick up to my head, my leg's not going to straighten all the way. I don't want to move away like that just so I can get a straight leg. I actually do want you to contract that quad muscle and then point flex. You're going to get a lot more calf stretching this way. And then circle around. And circle back. And then we're going to roll up. And guess what? We're going to do the kneeling hip flexor stretch again. If you don't want to do the kneeling hip flexor stretch, you can do it. Um, I would say get a rolled up towel or a rolled up blanket. I'm actually just going to use this right now. And I'm going to lift my hips up and throw it under my hips. And um, this is kind of it's kind of a nice dynamic stretch. So I'm going to bring my right knee into my chest. I'm going to bring my left knee into my chest as well. I'm going to push my left knee toward me, and then I'm going to stretch it open with my hand. And I'm going to take my right knee out to the side, and then I'm going to bring him back again. You could actually put your right hand underneath the fold of your leg, so that way one leg could. My right leg's kicking that way, my left leg is kicking this way, so I'm pushing my left knee into my hand and then pushing it away and then open the knee to the side. So that is one way that you could do this if you don't want to do the kneeling version. But the kneeling version is just so much better. So I'm going to use this blanket actually for my knee. I'm going to kneel on it. 
rise up, bring my left foot forward. I'm going to scissor my inner thighs together to the opposite of sticking my butt out as I go into the stretch. So I'm going to shift forward and back. It's definitely my go-to stretch for travel, one of them. Because of all the sitting, everything just gets super tight. And usually my quad does too. And then before we switch sides, I am going to do a little downward dog stretch. So hands and knees, tuck the toes under, lift the hips, pedal the heels into the mat. So just walk each heel. One goes down, the other one goes up, one goes down, the other one goes up. Another nice thing to do here. Open the feet a little bit wider and shift the hips from side to side. And then I'm going to lift the heels, shift forward, shift back, and slowly lower the heels. You could even lift the heels, shift forward, and move into a plank and into an upward dog. If you're a yoga person, that might feel really good for you. One of my favorite sequences to just kind of move in and out of these two positions. I guess I'm kind of off camera here a little bit, sorry. And then I'm going to shift, I'm going to step forward the opposite foot. So kneeling hip flexor on the other side. I am imagining my back knee, this one, pulling into my chest. I'm going to do the opposite of sticking my butt out. I'm not going to lean forward as I go into the stretch. So inner thighs pulling together, shift forward and back. Your front heel should feel like it's pulling towards you. And your back knee should feel like it's pulling forward. So the legs are scissoring together. Keep the contraction going as you move in and out. Sometimes stretching the arms up above the head can give you a better stretch because of all the fascia tied together, just all the way down into the hip. And then I'm going to go back to my downward dog. Downward dog. Plank or upward dog. You could lower your knees if you want to. Downward dog. And often for me, this is enough spinal movement, enough limbering, that I feel like a real person. Ah, that last downward dog. Did you see what I did there? I'm going to show you what I did. So I shifted forward into my upper dog. I'm going to wiggle my hips a little bit. Bring one down and then the other. Sometimes you've seen people do this as an as a abdominal exercises where they're on their elbows. You may or may not have seen this where you tip a hip and then you tip a hip. Same thing, except this is going to be a chest more open type thing. You're going to lower a hip and then lower a hip. It's a great stretch for your psoas. So I'm kind of bringing my chest through my arms each time. Ah, there we go. Okay, that about does it. So yeah, just quick, simple, easy stretches when you're traveling can make a world of difference. And then you're ready to start your day. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'll see you next time. Happy stretching. Bye-bye.